Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my nephrology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about nephritic syndrome, when I'm losing blood in the urine. We talked about nephrotic syndrome, when I'm losing proteins in the urine. We talked about acute kidney failure and chronic kidney failure, both of which will give me azotemia. Azot means nitrogen because we're talking about blood urea nitrogen, nitrogen that's in the urea. Why do we call nitrogen azote? Because it literally means no life, because you cannot survive only on nitrogen. You need oxygen for sure. After that, we talked about kidney infections like pyelonephritis. We also talked about cystic kidney diseases. Today, we continue our discussion on kidney tumors. The last video was about angiomyolipoma. Today's video is on renal cell carcinoma. If it ends in oma, it's a tumor. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Kidney diseases could be diseases of inflammation, diseases of infection, diseases of the vessels, diseases of the kidney interstitium, cystic diseases of the kidney, obstructive diseases of the kidney. We talked about all of these before. Today we're talking about an oma, a malignant oma, which is renal cell carcinoma. It's a cancer. Urological tumors include kidney cancers, ureter cancers, and bladder cancers. All of them can give me blood in the urine. And by the way, any adult patient with hematuria, unless it's after trauma, has cancer until proven otherwise. How do you work up the cancer? Try to visualize it. But before you visualize it, feel it on physical exam. Then visualize it. Imaging such as ultrasound, CT scan, MRI. What's the most accurate test? Biopsy the mass. But how do I obtain the sample? My papa drives a Rolls Royce. You can obtain your sample via a needle through the skin, percutaneously, or good old open surgery, if it's bladder cancer, cystoscopy with biopsy. Kidney cancer can be divided into two categories. If the cancer started in the kidney, we call this primary, such as today's topic, renal cell carcinoma. But if the cancer started somewhere else and then metastasized to the kidney, for example, the cancer started in the adrenal gland, then went to the kidney, or in the liver, and then went to the kidney, or the colon, and then went to the kidney, we call these secondaries or metastases. Do you remember the structure of the kidney? I bet you do. What's that called? Proximal convoluted tubule. The tubule has a lumen, but of course the tubule is lined by epithelium. I mean, any cavity in your body is lined by epithelium. This epithelium is probably the origin of the renal cell carcinoma. Tubular epithelial cells in the proximal convoluted tubule. Look at this, proximal renal tubular cells. There is something important to understand about renal cancer. Let's suppose that we have cancer in this kidney, which is the left kidney, and cancer in this kidney, the right kidney. And then we will metastasize both of them. The cancer on the left side metastasized here, to this left renal vein, and the cancer on the right side also metastasized to this right renal vein. What's going on? Look at my right testicle. I should not have said it that way. Testicular or gonadal vein, look at this, we're draining into the inferior vena cava, and I'm draining to the heart. I am not affected by this cancer whatsoever. But look at my left testy. Spermatic vein, testicular vein, call it whatever you want to call it, even call it left gonadal vein, drains to the left renal vein. And look, I am obstructed by the metastasis of this renal cancer. So what do you think is gonna happen? All of that venous blood will be unable to drain. Therefore, all of the venous blood will accumulate and pile up and pile up back up here until I end up with left-sided varicocele with a bag of worms sensation in my left testy, not the right testy. How do you remember this medicosis? Easy. Look at the left renal vein. It goes from the left kidney all the way until it reaches the inferior vena cava. It's a very long distance. However, the right renal vein has a very short distance. Mnemonic time. The left renal vein is very long. It is so long, it has lots of space that it agreed to accept drainage from the left gonadal vein and from the left adrenal vein as well. One from above, one from below. Now onto today's topic, renal cell carcinoma. 
Where does it come from? Where does it arise from? It arises from proximal renal tubular cells, as we have discussed. What is the pathological type? The most common subtype is clear cell adenocarcinoma. When you look under the microscope, the cells are very clear. There is no gunk inside. And this is called clear cell adenocarcinoma. When you hear the word adeno, you remember what? Gland. What do glands do? They secrete something. Oh, I got you. So this cancer can secrete erythropoietin. And before you know it, I have increased red blood cell count, increased hemoglobin and hematocrit. This is secondary polycythemia. Would you call this rise in EPO appropriate or inappropriate? Well, it's not secondary to hypoxia. Indeed, it is secondary to cancer, so it is inappropriate. That's correct, so it is over 18, just like the patient's age. The typical patient of renal cell carcinoma is usually older, not just older than 18, in his 60s. Risk factors for renal cell carcinoma, old age, being male, Indeed, it's twice as likely in males as in females. Smoking cigarettes, being obese, being on dialysis for a long time, being exposed to lead or asbestos or petroleum products, including gasoline, or a congenital disease known as von Hippelinda, which is a translocation, usually. It involves chromosome number three. Remember, you have three letters, VHL, chromosome three, and more three letters, RCC, renal cell carcinoma. In one kidney, right? No, this disease is brutal. Two kidneys, that's it, right? No, and other tumors, where are they? In my retina of the eyes, oopsie, and cerebellum. I can't walk, I can't see, I can't pee normally because my pee has hematuria. What are the types of renal cell carcinoma? Sporadic and hereditary. What the flip is the difference? Hereditary is a genetic cancer, which means it runs in my family. For example, my daddy has it, my grandpa has it, etc., etc. That's a hereditary renal cell carcinoma. Or sporadic. My dad was fine, my grandpa was fine, my mom was fine, my aunt, everyone in the family was I am the first person in this family to develop renal cell carcinoma, i.e., it developed sporadically, de novo, out of the blue. Should I blame my parents or should I blame the stars? On physical exam and history, renal cell carcinoma is a classic triad of flank pain, costovertebral angle pain and tenderness, flank mass that can be palpable on physical exam, as well as hematuria, blood in the urea, blood in the urine. Does every case of renal cell carcinoma have to have these three things? No, many of them remain occult, hidden, no symptoms whatsoever, discovered incidentally on imaging. And in some cases, RCC is symptomatic. Can we have other symptoms? Sure, if the renal cell carcinoma on the left kidney metastasized to the left renal vein, male patients can develop left-sided varicoceles. And don't forget the perineoplastic syndrome. I can get symptoms of polycythemia or symptoms of hypercalcemia. You remember the classic symptoms of primary hyperparathyroidism? We can see similar symptoms. Bones, groans, thrones, moans, psychiatric overtones, and phones. Call the emergency medical services because the hypercalcemia gave me acute pancreatitis. Not just pancreatitis, but transaminitis, elevated levels of liver transaminases or aminotransferases if you want to be genteel about it. You can also have more complications. Like any cancer, renal cell carcinoma can give me weight loss and cachexia. And don't forget the crazy Stouffer syndrome. What's that? This is renal cell carcinoma causing liver cell dysfunction even without metastasizing to the liver. What in the world? Yeah, boy, metabolic organs can affect one another even without metastasis. And it goes the other way around as well. Does anyone remember hepatorenal syndrome? That's a liver disease causing kidney disease even without metastasis. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Prognosis, well, it depends on the metastasis. Most patients will have no metastasis. If metastasis happens, it's usually late. But if it does happen, it decreases my survivability or the five-year survival rate to about 45%, which means half of the patients with RCC with metastasis will not make it past five years. This is just sad. 
if the cancer extends to the capsule, if the cancer extends to the left renal vein, it carries poor prognosis because it means it is metastasizing. ESR is elevated as if we care. ESR is very nonspecific. It tells you there is something going on, but it never specifies what exactly is going on. And given the fact that there are more than 10,000 conditions in medicine, it is not that stinking helpful, maybe in the exception of temporal or giant cell arteritis. When ESR is super duper high, you give steroids right away, otherwise the patient can go blind. But other than this, ESR is a piece of garbage test. How about EPO? Well, it depends. Sometimes EPO is high if it's a perineoplastic syndrome. But remember that this cancer is growing, growing, growing and encroaching on the kidney itself. Maybe it encroaches on the cells that make EPO, and EPO can go down, giving me anemia. This can be called anemia of malignancy. You can also call it anemia of chronic disease. And in most cases, it will be a normocytic. But hey, medicosis, I studied that anemia of chronic disease is microcytic. Yes, indeed, but it starts at normocytic. However, on your exam, when they ask about RCC anemia, go with normocytic. In most cases, you will be correct. How can we diagnose this tumor? Good history, meticulous physical exam, and then go to the labs and go to imaging stuff. What do I expect from the labs? We just talked about them right here, and then imaging, ultrasound of the abdomen, CT scan of the abdomen, MRI, etc. Then you biopsy. The mass usually looks bright yellow, and it's usually larger than three centimeters in diameter. The mass is usually at the upper pole, not the lower pole of the kidney. Lots of cysts, lots of bleeding, lots of necrosis, like any cancer. Hemorrhage and necrosis are criteria of malignancy. When you see hemorrhage and necrosis, that's not benign, baby, for the most part. Clear cell adenocarcinoma is the most likely subtype to be encountered under the microscope, and it's clear. It has lipid, it has glycogen. Besides clear cell adenocarcinoma, what else could it be? It could be a papillary chromophilic adenocarcinoma. Chromophilic, I love colors. What's the opposite of that? Chromophobic renal cell carcinoma. There is also oncocytic renal cell carcinoma, and there is the Bellini duct carcinoma or the collecting duct carcinoma. And not just oncocytic renal cell carcinoma, there is another one called oncocytoma. Just remember, it's benign, it's brown, it is rich in mitochondria, and that's why if you have too many mitochondria, you will stain pink under the microscope, acidophilic. Is it made from the proximal tubular cells? No, oncocytoma is made from the intercalated cells, which are part of the late distal and collecting ducts. Around the nucleus, there is usually no clearing, no perinuclear clearing. Unlike the chromophobic RCC, which has peritubular clearing. On an exam question, if they describe a kidney tumor as benign, brown, with central radial scar, and rich in mitochondria, the answer is oncocytoma. Back to clear cell adenocarcinoma. Okay, it has lipid, it has glycogen, it has clear cells. What else? How do you grade it and how do you stage it? Remember, grading, it has letter G and D. Grading is the degree of differentiation. What do you mean? You could be well differentiated as a tumor or poorly differentiated. Which one is worse? Of course, the poorly differentiated is worse. If you are well differentiated, it means that you are low grade. But if you are poorly differentiated, it means high grade, which is awful. How about staging then? Staging is not grading. Staging is the size and the spread of the tumor. How do I establish grading? In order to see the degree of differentiation, you need histopathology. You need to look at the cells under the microscope. But for staging, for the size and the spread of the cancer, you need the following song. Physical exam and CT scan physical exam and CT scan. For example, if you can palpate a tumor in my kidney and a tumor in my liver and a tumor in my whatever, 
then it means it has spread all over the place. If you can palpate a bigger tumor, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger every time you see the patient, that's a bad sign. It means it is spreading and growing. And of course, CT scan will show you where in the body is the tumor, how many masses, how many sites, etc. Management, surgical resection, of course, if you have to remove the entire kidney, it will be called total nephrectomy. How do I remove the tumor? You can do this through good old open surgery or the newer laparoscopic surgery or the even newer robotic surgery. Oh, by the way, just because something is fancy and new and modern and more expensive doesn't necessarily mean that the patient outcome will be better because that is an empirical question, not a foregone conclusion. The outcome could be better, could be worse, could be the same. Besides surgery, do we have other options? Yup, immunotherapy or targeted therapy such as interferon alpha, interleukin-2 or tyrosine kinase inhibitors, TKI. Do you remember the TINIBs? For CML, it was called imatinib. Here it's called sunitinib or sorafenib or pozapanib. Who named these things? When renal cell carcinoma, the primary cancer, metastasizes, it can go to many organs. It can go to my lungs. And it's not going to be one mass. It's going to be multiple masses because it goes with the blood. Take this. Tumor, tumor, tumor. This will be cannonball appearance in my lungs. If it goes to bones, it will give me lytic, not blastic, bone lesions. If it metastasizes to lymph node, they will be painless. Remember, cancer is painless. Infection is painful for the most part. And then it can also metastasize to the skin. Recall that this tumor has hemorrhage. It is vascular. And when it goes to the skin, it will give me vascular hemorrhagic nodules. So we just talked about RCC. Let's compare this with bladder cancer. The most common type of renal cell carcinoma is the clear cell adeno. The most common type of bladder cancer is the transitional cell carcinoma, also known as urothelioma or the urothelial cancer. Because the transitional epithelium that is normally in the bladder is also known as urothelium, the epithelium of the urinary tract, such as the ureter and the bladder. Transitional cell carcinoma has the classic papillary appearance. This was an old male smoker. Same thing here. This patient was obese and on dialysis, exposed to lead, arsenic, or gasoline. This is also an old male smoker, but exposed to other things such as aniline dyes, aromatic amines, or a worker in the rubber industry, such as manufacturing tires, or a patient taking cyclophosphamide. How about hematuria? I can see hematuria with either one. Besides clear cell adenocarcinoma, what else did we have? We had the chromophobic, the chromophilic, the oncocytic, the oncocytoma, and the Bellini. Here, we can also have squamous cell carcinoma after chronic infection, such as the Egyptian guy like me with chronic schistosoma hematobium, not treated, unresolved. It is notorious for causing squamous cell carcinoma of the bladder. It is such an ugly parasite. The late famous Egyptian singer known as Abdel Halim Hafiz died from schistosoma, but it was the other schistosoma, schistosoma mansoni. But that's a story for another time. The chronic infection of the bladder does not have to be cystosoma. It could be any cystitis that is chronic and unresolved. Smoking is also a risk factor, of course. Diagnosis of these cancers, history, physical exam, and imaging, such as CT scan, ultrasound, MRI, etc. Staging is always physical exam and CT scan. Management is surgery and others. Speaking of surgery, do you want to learn about trauma surgery, the different types of shock? How about orthopedic surgery? How about urological? surgery, ophthalmological surgery, and much more, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. And speaking of cancers, I have a course on anti-cancer pharmacology on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com. If you do not want to download my courses but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button, choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos. Please subscribe and hit the bell, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.